But things have been crazy for a while now, as you know. And that brings us to um, this scoop that we've got tonight. Um, It was more than a year ago now, September 5th of last year, when an op-ed was published in the New York Times. The headline was, I am part of the resistance inside the Trump administration. I work for the president, but like-minded colleagues and I have vowed to thwart parts of his agenda and his worst inclinations. That op-ed published in the New York Times last September, the author, Anonymous. Before you got to the actual op-ed, there was this paragraph of explanation from the New York Times explaining why the paper was taking this, this, quote, rare step of publishing an anonymous op-ed. The Times said it had done so, quote, at the request of the author, a senior official in the Trump administration whose identity is known to us and whose job would be jeopardized by its disclosure. But then below that explanatory intro from the Times, um, the mysterious author just jumped right in, and it was as dramatic as you'd think it might be. Quote, President Trump is facing a test to his presidency unlike any faced by a modern American leader. Many of the senior officials in his own administration are working diligently from within to frustrate parts of his agenda and his worst inclinations. I would know I am one of them. Quote, we believe our first duty is to this country and the president continues to act in a manner that is detrimental to the health of our republic. That's why many Trump appointees have vowed to do what we can to preserve our democratic institutions while thwarting Mr. Trump's more misguided impulses until he is out of office. It may be cold comfort in this chaotic era, but Americans should know that there are adults in the room. We fully recognize what is happening and we are trying to do what's right, even when Donald Trump won't. Wow, right? That's September 5th of last year. Um, The author got specific in terms of outlining concerns among those closest to the president, got very specific about that in one particularly unnerving way that went on to dominate the news for quite a few days afterwards. The author asserting that there were, quote, early whispers within the cabinet of invoking the 25th Amendment as a means of removing Trump from office, from within. Just gobsmacking stuff, right? And if, of course, it would be hard to overstate the gravity-defying level of intrigue that that anonymous op-ed generated, right? Bo- both about what this anonymous official was saying about what was effectively wrong with the president, what was happening inside the White House, but there was also just this furious explosion of speculation as to who anonymous was, as to who had written this thing. A parade of senior administration officials came out and denied themselves being the author. Uh, You might remember the use of the word lodestar in the op-ed made a lot of people question whether the author could potentially be Vice President Mike Pence. Could it be? I don't know. The word lodestar has been one of his favorites in recent speeches, and it's not that common a word. Could that be it? After speculation fell on him in that way, Vice President Pence not only emphatically denied being the author, he said that whoever was the real author must resign immediately. The U.N. ambassador at the time, Nikki Haley, perhaps inadvertently brought suspicion on herself, too, when she, unprompted, published this forceful denial in The Washington Post. Quote, when I challenge the president, I do it directly. My anonymous colleagues should have, too. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats, Defense Secretary Jim Mattis, all of them came out and said, not it, not it, it isn't me. Meanwhile, the president's own response was to tweet a single word with a question mark. Treason? He followed that up with another, calling upon the New York Times to, quote, turn him or her over to the government at once. Needless to say, the New York Times was not going to do that. But there was every expectation that the author would be outed, would be found out somehow soon, right? But yet now, well over a year later, since that op-ed was published, The identity of that senior administration official remains anonymous. We still don't know. Whoever it was, warning of a a dangerous president, right, who was was only being held back from true disaster by his own appointees, working diligently from within to frustrate parts of his agenda and his worst inclinations. I mean, whoever that was, more than a year later, that person is still anonymous. And now it's come to this. Within the last two weeks, we got news that this still anonymous author has written a book, and it's called, quote, A Warning. The book is done. It's due to be published this month. 
the news that the anonymous op-ed author has written a book along the same lines. That, of course, has inevitably set off a whole new round of guessing games as to who it might be. It remains unclear who it is. And interestingly, it remains unclear whether the author is still a member of the administration. I mean, Anonymous is still being billed as a senior Trump administration official. At the time of the New York Times op-ed in September, though, the Times went out of their way to describe the op-ed writer as a current senior administration official. Is the person still a current official inside the administration? We don't actually know, as the book is coming to press. Only the book's publisher and the New York Times editorial page department uh, know, know who it is and whether or not that's still the case. They're not saying. But I'll tell you tonight, we have obtained um, excerpts from this book, lengthy excerpts from this book, and I'm going to share a couple of these with you tonight. I will tell you, bottom line, um, the op-ed, and again, I, I haven't seen the entire book. I've seen these excerpts. Bottom line, what I can tell from the excerpts that we've seen is that the main point of that op-ed was that reassurance, right? It may be cold comfort in this chaotic era, but Americans should know there are adults in the room. We are trying to do what's right, even when Donald Trump won't. It was kind of, it was a, it was a, it was a, a, a alarm, but the anonymous author was saying, there's people here who are making sure that things don't go so badly off the rails. The country's not going to be at risk in the way that you might be worried about because we're here and we're keeping everything. Since that op-ed was published, this author is now sounding a different tone. This author is now essentially saying that if you were comforted at all by the fact that there were officials inside this administration who were keeping things on track and thwarting the president's worst and most misguided impulses, you maybe shouldn't be comforted by that anymore because that may no longer be the case. And even if it is the case that there are people trying, it may not be enough. So, as I say, my impression here overall is that it is dark, but we've got these new excerpts, and I'm going to share them with you now. Uh, so this first one is from the introduction. This, again, is from a warning by Anonymous, a senior Trump administration official. Quote, the Donald J. Trump administration will be remembered as among the most tumultuous in American history. Future historians will record the volatility of the president's decision-making, as well as the internal struggles of a government forced to grapple with it. They will write that his advisors came to find him unfit for the job. He couldn't focus on governing, and he was prone to abuses of power, from ill-conceived schemes to punish his political rivals, to a propensity for undermining vital American institutions. The president still lacks the guiding principles needed to govern our nation and fails to display the rudimentary qualities of leadership we should expect of any commander in chief. In the Times op-ed, I wrote of a quiet resistance of Trump appointees at the highest levels trying to manage his rash impulses. We wanted the administration to succeed and supported significant components of the president's agenda, but we were alarmed by his unstable behavior in public and private. Those who tried to steer him away from self-destructive impulses were not the so-called deep state, I wrote, but the steady state. This idea was assailed by the president. But the notion that his team is working to protect him from himself has since become one of the defining narratives of the Trump administration. Indeed, it was a hallmark takeaway from special counsel Robert Mueller's report on the investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election. The president's efforts to influence the investigation were mostly unsuccessful, Mueller wrote, but that is largely because the persons who surrounded the president declined to carry out orders or accede to his requests, close quote. This included the president's demand that White House counsel Don McGahn fire the special counsel, a request McGahn rebuffed for fear it would trigger what he regarded as a potential Saturday night massacre and lead to Donald Trump's impeachment. It probably would have. President Trump should not be shocked that wary aides and cabinet members saved his presidency. My colleagues have done so many times. He should be worried, we all should be worried, that these reasonable professionals are vanishing. The president is chafed by those who dare to challenge him. He's targeted and removed many of these officials, from Secretary of State Rex Tillerson to Chief of Staff John Kelly, one by one. Others have grown tired of the charade and left of their own accord. With every dismissal or departure of a level-headed senior leader, the risks to the country grow, and the president is validated by a shrinking cadre of advisors who abet or encourage his bad behavior. We are already seeing the consequences. 
Through a toxic combination of amorality and indifference, the president has failed to rise to the occasion in fulfilling his duties. In these pages, I will underscore what Americans should actually be concerned about when it comes to Trump and his administration. So that is the first excerpt we have obtained from the book, A Warning, uh, by the anonymous author who published that explosive op-ed in the New York Times last fall, claiming both that the president was dangerously unfit and that he was only being held back from disaster by some of his own advisors who were working to frustrate his worst intentions. Um, I'm going to take a, a, a break here for a second, but I want to tell you there's more. Um, that whole idea laid out at the end of that first excerpt here the, uh, of what Americans should actually be concerned about when it comes to Trump and his administration. We've got a lot more specificity from this anonymous author um, in terms of what anonymous means by that, what exactly we should be concerned about. So I've got another excerpt for you from a warning by anonymous, a senior Trump administration official uh, coming up next. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.